My name is Lyle Murphy, the founder of Alternative to Med Center, and today we're going to be talking about Rexalte, also known as Brex Priprazole. Uh, and these are some of the questions that our readers and viewers have about Rexalte. Um, first question, how are atypical antipsychotics like Rexalte different from other atypicals such as Seroquel and Zyprexa? And this is a great question. Um, Rexalte is very akin to uh, Abilify, which um, there's another question down the list here that's going to kind of go through the distinctions between Rexalte and Abilify. Um, Rexalte is what is called, <clears throat> and this gets a bit technical, but Rexalte has a partial uh, dopamine agonist. Now, agonist means to assist, whereas antagonist means to resist. So drugs like Zyprexa and Seroquel actually don't let as much dopamine come out of the out of the receptor into the into the synaptic space. So basically, the membrane that holds the um, the dopamine neurotransmitter in the synaptic vesicles is less permeable to dopamine because of Zyprexa or Lantipine. So not as much is allowed to get out and excite something in the first place. Um, <clears throat> now, where the where dopamine actually exerts its influence, if 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 this side is where the 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 dopamine, let's say, is being stored, on this side being the receptors, um, Zyprexa and Seroquel will resist the dopamine coming out from here in the first place. Rexulti more or less acts more on the receptor side of things by making by occupying the dopamine receptor so that actually true dopamine can't bind there so it tends to soften the amount of this excitatory neurotransmitter called dopamine and for those viewers who haven't watched my other videos <clears throat> dopamine is the chemical equivalent of reward it's the the part of our brain that starts to perceive reward starts occurring um around the age 12, 13, <clears throat> and um, it's what gives us the interest in um, people we're attracted to. Um, it promotes us going out and getting a job because it, it, it literally symbolizes that there's a reward out there that <clears throat> is outside of me that I then have to um, move in the direction of. So for some people, that's shopping, gambling. For some people, that's a job well done. For some people, that's an intimate relationship. Um, and too much dopamine can make everything rewarding um, and, be, and have these rewards coming too much too fast. And so um, the, the mechanism of these drugs is to attenuate the way that dopamine is being perceived and transmitted within the central nervous system. So they have a similar effect but they're really operating by sort of different pharmacological principles. <clears throat> uh, next question. What dopaminergic pathway is affected by Rexulte? Well, the atypicals are not just um, dopamine. So um, Rexulte, like the others, is uh, also having an effect on serotonin. Um, but it's a, it's a partial agonist of both the serotonin 5-HT receptor and it's also affecting the D2 and the D3 receptors, uh, which are both the D3 and the, the D2 and D3 receptors are um, receptors for dopamine. So it's basically occupying those spots so that the actual neurotransmitter can't get into that spot. It's kind of like someone barricading you from getting into a parking spot. <clears throat> um, next question Can you stop Rexulte cold turkey? Um, under most circumstances, I don't recommend stop, even though I hate these antipsychotics, they're, they're far worse to me than opiates, but I don't, it's not a good idea to stop an antipsychotic cold turkey. I mean, if you've been taking it for two or three days, um, and you're not still having the symptoms of why you got put on it, you know, that's going to be a lot different than if you've been taking it for a year or five years and try to stop cold turkey. <clears throat> so it's kind of like the amount of time you've been on an antipsychotic is kind of like climbing up the stairs to a um, 
multi-story building, um, let's say 10-story building. So if you've been on it for three years, you might be at the third story. You don't want to just step off the third story and, and try to hit the ground because it's going to be a catastrophe. And of course, the higher and longer you've been on it, the uh, more challenging that's going to be. You have to walk back down the same stairs that you went up to get there, basically. And that means a taper that is going to be um, slow enough for the person to be able to... Um, adjust their physiology in the same way it's been skewed along the way by the antipsychotic. <clears throat> um, how long does it take before you get addicted to Rixalte? It's very different for very different people. Um, you know, um, three months to six months would be kind of a ballpark average. Um, um, and it, 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 it depends on what your definition of addiction is. So my definition of addiction is, are you going to suffer withdrawal effects that were caused by the drugs? And, <clears throat> you know, again, after one month, the withdrawal effects would be not as impactful as they would be after six months. So I would say somewhere between three to six months is where the hooks start getting set. And you have to really start considering a very good strategy and a good strategist to help them get back off that medication. Um, the next question, the doctor prescribed to me Sinequin, which is doxepine, a tricyclic, um, Rixalte at 0.5 milligrams and deloxetine at night. <clears throat> Should I be concerned about raised sugar levels as I'm diabetic? Um, any of the antipsychotics are going to alter sugar metabolism. It's one of the more pronounced uh, impacts of long-term antipsychotic use is how it affects um, glucose metabolism. So yes, you um, want to bring this up, of course, with your doctor and let your doctor know that you have these concerns because um, they could become even bigger concerns if, um, if you're taking this type of medication. Next question. <clears throat> how long does it take to withdraw off Rixalte? Um, for instance, one milligram taken for two weeks. Um, one milligram taken for two weeks, um, it, it, it depends on your symptomatology. If you've only taken it for two weeks, you're probably not going to hit that place where your nervous system has so much adapted to this drug that um, <clears throat> the withdrawal effects are going to be really pronounced from that adaptation that happened to the drugs. Um, but if you're still symptomatic and you come off of these drugs, then... Um, you may go right back into having symptoms. So it, it really depends on the person. Um, if you've been on it for two weeks at one milligram, maybe, you know, you take two to three weeks to get back off of it. But again, you know, if you're on one milligram and you go down to 0.75 and you're doing okay for uh, a, a while and you go down to 0.5 and you're still doing okay, you're still sleeping, you're still eating, maybe you can keep going. If you can't, you get stuck. I mean... Some people might have to take three months to get back off a of medication like this. They've only been on for two weeks. So it's really, there's not like a really straight answer. Uh, there are videos on our website. Um, <clears throat> if you go to the Alternative to Med Center website and on the search bar, you type in uh, antipsychotic tapering. Um, I think that gives you probably the best information to, to, to kind of cover the different variables so that um, you can get better answers to these questions. And even that's going to be, you know, somewhat incomplete because there's a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different factors. <clears throat> um, there is another uh, resource for people. Um, well, there's, there's databases of doctors who, um, you know, are more um, friendly for people who want to do integrative methods. And one of them is called the, uh, the Integrative Medicine for Mental Health. It's, the acronym is I M M H and it's I M M H dot O R G is their uh, URL. <clears throat> Go on there. They've got an option to find practitioner. You can change the, um, <clears throat> basically if you just put in your zip code, you don't have to put in your whole address and then change um, the search radius to maybe a hundred miles within your area. Hopefully you're in a place where you can find a um, integrative psychiatrist that can kind of help you navigate some of these things. <clears throat> um, next question, is there a scenario for you to be prescribed Rixalte and Trintilix together? 
this, it, these are the kind of medication combinations that <clears throat> perplex me that the um, psychiatric profession um, prescribes together because one is holding back dopamine and the other one is basically making more dopamine available. So they're really, they don't, I mean, you've got to ask yourself, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to stop your car or are you trying to make it go? Because this is like hitting the gas pedal and the accelerator at the same time. And um, <clears throat> anyone who has, to my mind, anyone that has psychotic features or has had recent episodes of um, psychosis really should not be on a medication like Trentilix that will then make uh, more available dopamine to them because that alone could tip them over the um, tip them over. So <clears throat> it sounds like um, there's other directions to go with that. And um, <clears throat> if a person is truly having uh, manic symptoms, then and they feel like they need to take another medication in addition to that um that's an antidepressant you probably would want to go with a straight um S sri which would be like prozac um i'm not the biggest fan of paxil <clears throat> because it's a little bit too heavy hitting with serotonin but something like mm, paxil or prozac or <clears throat> Celexa or something uh next question <clears throat> Does stiff hand muscles caused by Rexalta fade with time as the body builds up tolerance against the medication? <clears throat> if you're having muscle stiffness from taking an antipsychotic, um, I mean, anytime you're messing with the dopamine pathways, you can have things like tremors, you can have stiffness, you can have problems with your coordination, but muscle stiffness particularly is not something you really want to overlook and think, oh, this might go away later, because that could be an indication of um, extra pyramidal symptoms, which means um, um, part of dyskinesia, things like that, that are neurological issues that these drugs can um, elicit. And if you're having muscle stiffness, um, you want to go back to your doctor pretty stat and tell them that you're having these problems and to ask them if, is this a sign of tardive dyskinesia and see what they say. So I, it's not, that's not one I would just try to push through and hope it goes away. <clears throat> <clears throat> Why wasn't Rixolte approved for an ADHD medication? I don't exactly know, but I thank God it wasn't because um, the off label use of antipsychotics is, um, it's just, it's kind of an anathema to me. I, 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 I don't, and especially for ADHD, I mean, most of the ADHD people I've seen either need to stop eating so much sugar, um, control their blood sugar, um, take some tyrosine or some uh, a DLPA, which you wouldn't want to take if you have psychotic features. This is, um, we're just talking about someone who has ADHD to help them focus, help them build more dopamine, more norepinephrine. Um, and you know, look at food allergies and stuff like that. To, to take an antipsychotic for something like ADHD, I mean, you're really, you're really, um, you're really putting yourself down a dangerous course of, of medication for something that has probably other much more attainable and less toxic solutions than an antipsychotic. Um, next question. How is Rixolte different from Abilify? <clears throat> So this is kind of interesting. So just like um, just like Risperdal, you know, when it ran out, when when Risperdone ran out of um, its trademark, which occurs after seven years, <coughs> they had to come up with a new drug in order to patent it. So they came up with um, Invega, which is paliperidone. So Risperdone and paliperidone are very similar um, medications, and <coughs> Abilify was actually a very popular drug. Probably, I would say, the top prescribed um, medication for um, bipolar. And um, its patent ran out. So they came up with a different drug. Now, um, Rixolta is kind of new, so I haven't had as much time on the mat with that, certainly, as Abilify. Um, so I had to read up a little bit on, on Rixolta and try to really di discern what the differences are. Both of them are partial um, dopamine agonists, 
which for both of them, that what that means is it's probably going to have a dampening effect on um, dopamine, which means a dampening effect on mania and manic symptoms. But it also could have an escalating effect. And what I read so far says that um, Abilify at lower doses has a higher preponderance of eliciting these um, stimulating effects than Abilify would at a higher dose. And in all actuality, what they're saying about Rexalta is it's kind of the reverse mechanism of that, that at a lower dose of Rexalta, <clears throat> it can control manic symptoms better, whereas if you get at the higher doses, it may cause paradoxical symptoms. I have not personally seen that, so that's just based on some of the reading I did. But um, that's the information that's out there. Um, uh, one of the things I also picked up is that um, um, that basically um, Rixolte has more of a blocking effect of <clears throat> of the dopamine rather than a, than the potential stimulating effects of Abilify, which is not what you want to have. You know, you don't want to give somebody Abilify and then have it escalate them even more. So I guess Rixolte has less of a chance of that um, kind of paradoxical effect. And um, that um, uh, Rixolte can reduce the risk of agitation and restlessness. So um, there you have it on that question. Um, next question is it worth to try to take Rexalte if there was limited success with Abilify? It's supposed to be an improved version. Um, probably not, really. I mean, they are such similar drugs that <clears throat> if one really didn't work, um, the likelihood that the other one's going to just suddenly work is not completely obscure, but... Um, it's not um, it's not just as high likelihood, but um, it, it, I guess if you were having a more of a stimulatory effect from um, Abilify, than you wanted, like it kind of controlled some symptoms, but it also gave you agitation, restlessness, and could escalate your symptoms um, at times. Then maybe Rig Salte would not have that same effect, but um, it's kind of like shades of gray there, and um, I think from a black and white perspective that. <clears throat> They're not really going to be that much different. Um, next question, is it worth to try to take Rixolte if there was limited... Oh, same question. All right, next question. How does a dopamine partial agonist like Rixolte interact with stimulants like Ritalin? Um, yeah, you, if, if you've had... Oh, that's a weird question. So um, Ritalin is really meant to raise your dopamine, and Rixolte is really meant to lower your dopamine. Again, these are two drugs you would not typically want to take together. Um, I mean, the, the 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 Ritalin itself in certain people can elevate a person to the point where they go manic. And if you already have manic symptoms, you don't want to be taking Ritalin. The, probably if you're having manic symptoms and Ritalin has been a composite of your medication profile for a period of time, then you probably want to try just getting rid of the Ritalin and seeing if that abates your psychosis. Um, trying to mix the two of them again, it's like, why would you be taking a stimulant if you're having psychotic symptoms? And again, if you're having psychotic symptoms from taking Ritalin, why would you take an antipsychotic to try to alleviate that? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. <clears throat> Um, next question. Have you seen good experiences with taking Rixalti for depression? Um, is it safer than most? I don't like using <clears throat> antipsychotics as an adjunct for depression. <clears throat> for one, if a person is depressed and lackluster and has, you know, major depressive disorder, this is not going to be a mood elevator. It's going to uh, tank you down even more. I mean, it may make a person less suicidal, but it's not going to lift their mood. And going to something as potent as an antipsychotic for depression, I mean, if you haven't already started working with a naturopath or someone that can do integrative medicine, and you've had failures from 
you know, typical antidepressants. I think the next move wouldn't be to just try more meds. It's the, the next move would be, how do you get your, how do you get in relationship with your body? And how do you have a natural neurochemistry that supports you feeling okay? And whether that's exercising or eating a good diet or taking some natural precursors that are going to promote brain health, those are the things that an integrative or a naturopath are going to help you figure out. That would be the place to go. Taking an antipsychotic for depression, I, I, I think it's, I think it's a, honestly, I think it's a marketing strategy for the drug companies to try to make more money. I don't think it has anything to do with good patient health. <clears throat> All right, next question. Can someone with trauma and psychosis <clears throat> still channel and be clairvoyant if they're taking Rexulti and Seroquel? Um, these sort of fourth dimensional gifts are probably going to be lessened if you're taking an antipsychotic. Now, I know my own personal history, there was um, too much insight coming at certain times and I didn't know how to integrate it. And um, I had to keep my feet on the ground in the face of getting those kind of downloads. And um, so for certain people that might be too much and for a lot of people in psychosis and, and, and mania, that's actually kind of what's happening. They're getting too much stimulation. And, um, you know, I'm not promoting drugs for any of these situations, but, um, the, the, the drugs could make it go away completely, or the drugs could bring it to a place where, um, you can work with some of those insights and integrate it. Um, and again, I think there's other ways to, to mediate those, that kind of overstimulation than using, um, antipsychotics for many people, not all. But um, yeah, some of those gifts might might drop by the wayside if you cherish them. Um, you know, eating good grounding food, um, exercising, vitamin C, niacin, maybe some lithium orotate might be a way to keep that in balance. Where you still have the gifts, but you um, can work with them rather than having them spin you out completely. Uh, next question. How can the psychiatric drug Rixulte cost about 50% of the typical monthly income of a new employee in the food industry like the young woman shown in their commercial? Um, well, that's sort of when you come out with a new medication and it's a patented drug, it's going to cost um, a lot of money. The drug company is not only having to pay for their um, drug study to get the approval from the FDA, which is many, 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 many millions of dollars <clears throat> to run those studies, have to pay for those studies. Also, they want to pay their shareholders um, <clears throat> enough money to have revenue in the billions. And they also have to brace themselves for the uh, lawsuits that are going to happen because they will happen with um, medications uh, to, to have sort of a reserve kitty to um, offset those legal fees. So that's going to be expensive. When a, when a medication drops into uh, a generic version, obviously it's a lot cheaper. They don't have to endure as many lawsuits from it. And um, by that time, their, uh, their investment for getting the approval has already been paid for. And that looks like it's the end of our questions for Rixolte. Uh, it's kind of a new drug. So um, we um, are starting to see it more and more, and we'll have a lot more information on it as time goes on. I do want to let you know that this is not medical advice. Um, in order to get medical advice, you have to actually be working with a doctor in your home state. And that these things and what you've heard here are talking points for your information only, things you can bring up with your um, prescriber, and also things you can consider as information only. All right. Thank you very much and have a great day or evening.